Kara la imla Yahweh ba Hashem Yahweh Shai ba Hashem Recha Kodesh. The more honor to the apostles and elders, a great millstone that rule well, the labor in the word and doctrine, shallow one minute peace. May that be unto the elect of the nation of Israel. Now we're in Second Timothy chapter three, and certain signs of the times. Of course, Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, the Messiah, the Anointed, the one the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. Of course, gave us signs, earthquakes, famines, pestilences. So on and so forth, as mentioned in Luke 21, Matthew 24, it's expounded upon, or, you know, that's an expounding upon the Apocrypha as well, you know, second Ezra's, I believe, well, 15 and 16, one of them does say, I think, 16 and, second Ezra's 16 and 18, in fact, I'm here, so let's see, second Ezra's 16 and 18 reads, you have the beginning of sorrows and great mornings, <clears throat> the beginning of famine and great death, the beginning of wars and the powers shall stand in fear. The beginning of evils. What shall I do when these evils evils shall come? You know, so that was written. When the Messiah spoke on the beginning of sorrows. Right, but these are also, as Apostle Paul said, to follow him as he followed the Messiah. So these are also epistles of a holy man, of the Most High, as of, as of course, within the scripture. So it's another sign another token or a few tokens we can look to you know, and this is just what inspired me to think of this scripture was sat in the barber shop in our jake talks you know going over it and the the pure disobedience especially of benyamian right, in, in england or at least in my you know barber shop of choice it's a lot of benjamin man so in you know the land where Benjamin tends to dwell, you know, the Caribbean, pursuant to Genesis 49. When you go into the typical traditional, you know, role, a child would very much be subject to their parents. Now, in England and all over the world, you know, but especially here in these sides, you know, that's gone out the window. And that's bearing witness of what the Most High said. You know, would happen, people waxing worse and worse because iniquity, as I say, the love of many shall wax cold because iniquity shall abound, right? Iniqui iniquity, unequalness, you know, not equal in terms of on the rank they should be, right? So, 2 Timothy chapter 3, starting at verse 1, says, This note also, in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, I mean, in desirous, boasters, proud. I was me, me, me. This is what I've done. This is what I did. All about me, all about me. Blasphemers. So speaking against, you know, injurious speech. Specifically against the Lord. He's anointed. Disobedient to parents. Or disobedient to parents. And that's, you know, pushed out in popular culture. Hollywood, the films. The music, the media, you know, to be, you know, back chat, how, you know, E, we back chatting. You know, that is not typically, you know, among Jake, that was never acceptable. But now again, through media, social media, you know, the, the clout chasing behavior, you know, especially of them that are up and coming or growing up within this world as it is now you know that is very common disobedient to parents unthankful unholy right we would say a colloquial ungrateful you know so you give an example of that is um you know a lot of people speak on 50 cent son you know he's a big or is it that 26 27 year old talking about how you know he should be getting child support which is you know more money than most people's wage <laughs> you know, just to use that within popular Jake culture, you know, but there's always going to be those examples, and it's more common now than ever. You know, and, and again, social media compounds that with what everyone has. Everyone's showing off what they have. You know, proud boasters, so on and so forth. That leads people to be unthankful. You know, for the sort of things they do have. You know, what the Lord has blessed them with. No one's content, everyone's chasing. 
chasing, chasing, chasing everything but the kingdom of heaven, right? Which truly is the solution for the ills among Jake. You know, but we're never meant to get it on this side holistically as a nation. You know, it's about the elect, but it is what it is. But these are observations, things that when you hear, when you see, should recall and remind you, or remind you and recall to mind these things written of our time. Were written for our learning. You know, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures should have hope. Right, so although we see these things, it's vexing, it's frustrating. You know, we should be comforted, reminded that we are with. You know, we could have been without, without this knowledge, without this truth, without the faith, without opportunity for repentance. You know, it could always be worse. Verse 3, without natural affection. You know, it's so unnatural. Unnatural affection, unnatural love, a lack of love. As it says here, truce breakers. A man's word used to mean something. Now you say it, you break it, you don't care. <laughs> you know, word used to be bond. Now, you know, no one, no one is, speaks in the scripture a good name. Let's search up a good name. It doesn't mean, oh, my name's, you know, Jaquarius. And that's, that's a good name, Ak. You know, it means a good reputation. Sham is a twofold. It means a name literally. It also means the reputation, right? When your name is mentioned, what is thought of, what is connoted to that? So Proverbs 22 and 1, A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches, and love in favour rather than silver and gold. So men of old used to value having a good name, having a clean, honest, righteous legacy. You know, that's a thing of the past. People would rather choose great riches than have a good name. People would sell out the morality sell out their moral compass, sell out their God, you know, and you can use that, apply that to the secular realm. People will sell out what they value highly, what takes a place of, in the ancient world, you know, a lot of, there's no such thing as a, a full-on atheist, you know, in the ancient world. Everyone had their, you know, their God. And I would argue the same today, whether it's be their wife, their money, their job, their children, their this, their that. You know, which you can value all of those things mentioned, you know, but in its rightful place, right? And when you put it on the level of the Most High, that's idolatry, you know, and that's a very dangerous slope to go into. If you put money above all those, if you put money above your morality, you know, you'll do anything for the money. So it says the love of money is what the root of all evil, because you made it an idol. So a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches and love in favour rather than silver and gold. Ecclesiastes 7 and 1 reads, A good name is better than precious ointment and the day of death than the day of one's birth. So you, in this society you have the idea of celebrating the idea of one's one's birth, you know, but what is vanity? You know, that is idolatry. You're worshipping yourself. People are raise a glass. You know, to me, to this person, to that person, well, what are you doing? It's a drink offering. You know, you're allowed to drink. You know, but it really is about. You know, of course, you you mark your years in that in that. You know, you're not going to say, "I don't know how old I am." <laughs> if someone was to ask, or use the calendar that's given. You know, but you don't reverence that day. You don't pay any mind. And then Syrac, Ecclesiastes forty-one and thirteen: A good life hath but few days. But a good name endureth forever. You know, but people now, again, would sell out anything for riches. You know, they don't really tend to care about the name, the legacy they lead. You know, I'm speaking in general terms, of course, but that's the the fashion of this world. Without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, right? That's one of the so-called Ten Commandments. There's many more than ten, but the ten you know, outlined in Exodus, the 20th chapter, which a lot of people speak on, well, thou shalt not bear false witness, false accusations, you know, will ruin a, a man's life, a man's career, a man's livelihood. You know, you're ruining a family. You know, but that's, again, that's a light thing. Or it's seen as now. 
incontinent, fierce, despises of those that are good. Right, so nothing's in order. That's why we need Hamashiach. We need that propitiation to bring back you know, what once was. These things that were held in esteem bring back the way of the Lord into the earth, manifest it in the earth. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of the Most High. Right, it's a violating commandments because it feels right, feels good. Thelema. Right, look up that. Thelema. To do according to one's will. It says, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses, and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with live diverse lusts. You know, so if you say smooth things, it's very easy to beguile, to trick people. You know, a lot of people want that. What does the phrase go? A comforting lie rather than a disturbing or an uncomfortable truth. Right, verse 7. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. And that's a lot. You know, but I'll leave it there. This note also, in the last days, perilous times shall come. All praise to Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rachel Kudash. Shalom.